everybody. Caleb here at the Rosa String Works Workshop. Today for my first solo intro, I've got my first customer guitar. I've got this Yamaha here. I'm gonna put it on the bench and show you what we're doing. So this is the Yamaha we got in here. You can see it is a, you see in the sound hole, it is a FG180 Yamaha guitar. It is in because the pick guard has come off, come unglued. It is missing a nut and a saddle. The biggest problem probably is the angle of this. I'll bring you a little closer so you can see. So our biggest problem is the angle that this goes. If I put the straight edge on the frets, run it back to the bridge, we run into the bridge, which is not good because the angle we should have should put us slightly above the bridge. Not wanting to spend more time than we have to on this, so neck reset is not going to be the preferred option. I'm not sure what we're going to do about it yet, but I think I'm going to start on an easier job and start looking at getting the rest of the glue pulled off where the pick guard goes. So to remove the glue, I'm using the round-ended X-Acto knife, just kind of scraping it away. The round end works really well, especially around the edges. So you can get all the way up to the edge, but the point doesn't stick out too far and heat into the finish. So I can just get right up to the edge and knock off what I need to. I'm going to get to it and show you when I get a little further or all the way. So on this Yamaha guitar, I've talked with Jerry and we've decided that the neck angle was bad enough that we're going to have to pull it. So the first thing I did was I took out this fret and I did that by putting some water around it to soften up the fibers, and then I pulled the fret. So the next thing I'm gonna do is drill a hole and hopefully hit the dovetail so that we can put some steam in and try to get this neck pulled. So that's what I'm gonna do. Well, here's where we are so far. Uh, we got this portion of the fretboard loose from the body, and then Jerry came over and helped me. We were trying to get the whole neck loose and we could not get it to even move. So we decided it was time to just take this little piece off so that we could get to the joint a little easier. Since we got it off, we put two little holes in on each side of the joint because that's where we really weren't getting movement. So now we're waiting for our steam to help fill those holes and loosen up some of that glue. That's where we are. So with a lot of trouble, we finally got the neck starting to move out of the hole. We had to go out and make a new tool, ground down a putty knife to try to fit in and to actually get her out. We're actually getting it to move. You might be able to see it's starting to come out. We got a little bit of clearance coming out of there. And the more I crank, the more it comes out. So you can really see it starting to move when I can really easily tighten the nuts. I think we got it. There we go. Neck removed. Doesn't look too bad. A little bit torn up in here. So here you can get a close look at the joint in the body. You can see here's our little, our only little problem spot where our tool didn't reach. You can really see how soaked this is. I'm gonna have to set this aside and wait for it to dry before I can do anything else. So that's what I'm gonna do. I got the neck off. Before I put it back in, I'm gonna take all the frets out and I'm gonna start on this piece and then I'll do the neck. So I thought I'd show you how I'm removing them and I'm just starting at one end, I'm taking little bites out and it brings them out. So I work my way down it, just little bites at a time. Here you can kind of see how it's starting to come out. I gotta be real careful with this rosewood because it likes to chip out. I've got some CA glue nearby. In case I get any big chips, I can just glue them back in. So there we go, there's one. And that one actually came out really well. Now you can see that where the tang marks are, but there aren't really big chip out. So nothing sticks up further than where the fret covers. So I think we'll be pretty good. Now I'm gonna do the rest. Now that I've got all the frets removed, I've started leveling the board a little bit. Now how I do that is a little bit of paper on a block and I check very often. See how flat I am. I can see that there's a, there's a bit of a drop in the center around my straight edge crossed, so I need to get the sides a little bit more. This will also help cover up some of the chips and a lot of the super glue from taking the frets out. Something else I have to remember to level is pieces of fretboard that hangs onto the body. On this Yamaha guitar, last time you saw me I was level on the board. I pretty much got it all level, so now it runs in a straight plane. We've got some of these divots out. We haven't gotten all the divots out, but it's only so far you can take it. So now what we're working on is getting the joint here to be really tight. The problem right now is there's just one or two places that are binding. It's not really making contact all the way through. So what we're doing is we're putting the carbon paper in, putting it in and taking it out. You can see 
right here, this black spot is the only place it's making contact with the body. So if I carve the black away, which is the high spot, it will make more contact. So I'm gonna carve the black away, put the carbon paper back in, put it back in, and we'll see the black get bigger and bigger until it covers most of the joint instead of just the little spots. Worked a little bit more on this side, you can see a lot more black spots. So that's what I'm doing. So here's where we are on the Yamaha. I've uh, got it carved out to the point in which it's not set flat. It's not loose by any means, but it doesn't take much to get it out. So going in and it's in, coming out. After I got Jerry to come over here and look at it, we've decided that the angle it sets now that we've actually got it out is pretty close to right. When you just put the straight edge over it, just above where the saddle's going to be. Something else we have to take into account is once there's frets in it, we'll be slightly higher. That's just about where we think we want to be. Saddle will be just the right height. So we're pretty happy with this. The next step is going to be filling these slots that we've opened up because now the neck sits back slightly more of an angle. So now there's slots that have opened up in the side. You can see the slots that have opened up in the side. So what I'm gonna do is try to fill those in so that we have the strength behind it. So how I'm gonna do that is I've already traced out some lines on this block here. And if you can see them, I've made little wedges. I'm gonna go cut out and we're gonna size them up to fit down there. And we'll dye these real dark so you'll never see them and it'll be just fine. It'll be the quickest, best way to do this. So here's where we're at. I've got the wedges in here and the angle's pretty close to right. I'd like to talk about how we put the wedges on the outside. The best way to do this would be to carve out out of here to make this flush and put the wedges on the inside. That takes a really long time to get it right. And seeing as this is a customer that Jerry knows and we're trying to save some money, this is the fastest way to do this. And you might be able to see these wedges from the outside, but we're going to dye them. You'd have to be looking really close if you were gonna see them. Something else we've done is we've shaved down some more wedges to fit in here on both sides once we glue it up just to help to add some strength. So this isn't necessarily the best way to do this, but this is the best way we've got for the time we wanna put into this. Here's where we are. I think we're just about ready for glue. The most recent addition is now this, this wedge here. And the reason we put this in is that so that the neck actually can't lift up at this joint. Now that we've got the right angle, it won't lift up and be at the wrong angle. So we've got a wedge here, the two wedges here, and our two wedges here. If you put the straight edge on it, which I can't right now because this wedge is in the way, but if you do, we're just above the bridge. I think we're ready for glue. So the neck is glued on and we've trimmed all our shims down. We've got this nice and flat. The next thing I'm gonna do is glue on the fretboard extension. While I'm doing that, I need to make sure I get all of these little chips, like this one, glued back down. There's a couple spots where the wood's starting to chip up, so I need to make sure I get glue underneath of it. Here I go. Well, we're all clamped up and it's Friday afternoon, so it'll probably stay this way till Monday. We'll see what it looks like then. So on this Yamaha guitar, the customer has decided that they wanted the damage here repaired. So we started with some amber shellac to color match and it did a really good job. And right now I'm building up clear so we get to level with the rest of the guitar and then we can blend it together. So in between layers of letting the shellac dry, I've been measuring the saddle slot and it's not the same width all the way through. So in order to making the saddle a little easier so it's all the same width, what I do is I find where it's small and I take one of these X-Acto knives. I just run it along the edge almost like a scraper and it'll open up the slot just a little bit because I don't want to take a whole lot off because it's not a whole lot. And I can check again. It's getting closer. It's been a while between the last clip of this Yamaha guitar and this one. Uh, what I've done is we built up some finish in here with the shellac and then we covered it with the brushing lacquer to protect the shellac and protect everything else. I've sanded it with 400, 600, and now I'm doing a wet 1200 over the whole area. Try to get everything to blend in real well. And after I'm done with the 1200, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna buff it out. I'm just trying to make big motions, trying to blend everything together, and it's turning out pretty good. Now this guitar probably isn't gonna be perfect. It was 
much worse when we started than it is now. I think that's all you could really ask for. I'm gonna get a little further along and then show you what I got. Here's what it looks like after I buffed it out. Uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start putting frets in. I've already got my fret wire out and bent. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this underneath each fret as I go along so it'll support the neck as I pound it in. And I can move it on to the next one and so on. And this guitar doesn't have any bindings, so that makes it a little bit easier on doing the fretwork. Here we go. So I've got all the frets in, and I've already kind of rounded off the ends. The next thing I'm going to do is a light leveling. Jerry took a look at them and said they weren't too bad the way they were, so it shouldn't really take much off the top to get these totally level. Once I get them level, I'm going to take my crowning file and crown them up and then polish them back up. But uh, I need to get them level first, so I'm going to get to that. So here we are, I leveled them out, and I even polished them up. Sense of time efficiency, I went and just did the whole thing. Since I'm going to have to clean the board up a little bit more here in a little bit anyway, because this is just faster than doing it any other way. So the next thing I need to do is get the, the nut and the saddle. I've already started on a saddle. You can see it here. It's a little oversized still for the hole both ways, both this way and this way. Um, I haven't started on a nut yet, but I'm going to get started here next. Hopefully I'm going to get this strung up today. Well, I've got the nut cut. It's oversized, and the saddle's cut, and it's oversized, but... I'm gonna put some strings on so I can see just how oversized I am. So that's the long way of saying, time to put some strings on it. So I got two strings on it, and honestly, we've had a big jump in time. I had it actually all the way strung up and all the way up to pitch. Jerry came back and he took a look at it, and he said it was all right, but it wasn't perfect, so... Actually, what I've done is I've made a new saddle and a new nut. We've also done quite a bit of work on the bridge. You can kind of see in the bridge where there's kind of now these black lines in front of the holes because they were all so worn out, the strings were actually catching in the holes from the bridge. So Jerry filled those with CA glue, cleaned up the bridge a little bit. So right now I've got the saddle in and the two E-strings in. The saddle's still pretty high, but I'm working on the nut side. I'm working down here in the nut. The nice thing about doing this a second time is you have an idea of just about where it needs to be. So I cut this down on the power tools almost to where it needed to be starting off so there was a whole lot less shaving to do this. Now I'm carving the slots. Now this shouldn't take me too long and I should be able to put the rest of the strings on it get it all tuned up. So I've got all my strings on here. The nut might still be a little high, but I'm going to start testing at the 12. Base E string is about 120 thousandths, and the high E string is at about 95. And I want those to be 80 on the high string and 90 on the low string. So I need to take, I'm about 15 off on this side, which means I have to take 30 off the saddle. And I'm about 20 off on this side. So I need to take 40 off the saddle, and eh, more than that, 30. I'm about 30 off on this side, so I need to take 60 off the saddle, and that'll pick me down. That is correct. <laughs> so about 30 off this side, and about 60 off this side, and that's on the saddle, and that'll bring me down where I want to be at the 12th fret. Well, I'm in the finish stage now. One of the last things I got to do, this bridge used to have finish on it, which didn't really make much sense. So we took that off when we cleaned up the string hole slots. But now I need to put some boiled linseed oil on it. 
So that's what it looks like once I got all the boiled linseed oil on there. Really brings the color back. I think there's one more thing I'm gonna do for put the pit guard on, I guess. So the truss rod cover on this guitar is made out of metal. So I'm gonna go ahead and take some of the Renaissance wax and do the truss rod cover and the tuners just to make it look a little better. I'll just make it look a little bit cleaner. May as well put a little bit on here. All right, it's looking good. Just about done with this thing. I'm getting ready to put the pick guard back on. Trying to make sure it's well lined up and I know where I'm gonna go with it. You can see this inner circle pretty much follows the curve of the pick guard. So I think that's where I want it, is following that circle. I'm gonna very carefully try to put it on there. There we go. I think that's pretty good. You can see it follows that circle pretty good. Covers up where it wasn't, it's looking good. Well, this Yamaha guitar is finished up. We've done a lot to this guitar. Uh, we started by taking the neck off and resetting the angle. You can see, you have a hard time trying to find anything we did there. But uh, we got the angle right. We filled in the big divot in here, and it's not a perfect repair. You can see it, but we'll protect the guitar, and it does look a lot better than it did. It's all got all new frets. It's all set up to play. It's got a new nut and a new saddle. It set up well. It plays really good. It's got a pick guard was off when it came in. We reattached the pick guard where it was. You can, can't can really tell that it's ever, ever come off. We even cleaned up the bridge a little bit. The bridge looks a lot better than when it came in. It was a real mess. It sounds real good. It's set up to play real well. Sounds real good, real good for the price of the instrument. I think the customer is going to be really happy with it. I know I am, and so is Jerry. So there we are. Thanks for watching. Yeah, yeah.